we're going to do frost as well we're only going to do the ones that de changed like we're gonna we're gonna just go over the only the 16 that de changed and that's the plan that is that is the current plan do you make it as simple as possible because they assume everyone other than themselves are lemmings well there so the reason to do these do, do simple changes and not like full systemic changes is because it requires a lot less developer time which is extremely valid i fully understand that there is a limit on like the amount of manpower they can put into that while they're working on angels of the Zaramon and the quest after that and like the warframe that's coming out like there's definitely a lot of things that need to come together in order to make a Warframe update, right? So in order to go back and do balance changes, sometimes you have to limit the amount of manpower that you're going to be giving that to a reasonable degree. So that just makes sense. So we're going to talk about what else they could have done and or if there's anything that they could have done. So first and foremost, we're going to go in the same order that they were listed uh on the uh update page so you can just if you were looking at that list you can see that full list of augments there if you need like a refresher on what all they do and stuff uh and then otherwise i will have the the whatever the augment does in game up here as well i'll change through it manually yeah basically overall the changes were number go up number go up was the number one thing that happened to a lot of the augments was just strictly number go up whether or not that was enough number go up we're gonna talk about the answer is no it wasn't um, but we also got critical chance during a buff on self, which is the one you can see here while you're invisible, you get 150% crit chance was added to this mod. That's probably the most unique thing we got. Uh, and then three, we have beneficial power stat positive for a specific power, the power of the augment. So that was what we got on hydroids corroding augment. Uh, and then we got reduced energy cost for a specific power, which is what we got on hydroids two. So reducing energy costs is a possibility to put on augments as well. Uh, and then restoring energy on hitting enemies is also one that we get from the guided effigy. So those are all the types of effects we have. So we have like a minor effect that doesn't really like it just adds like a small thing that procs off the ability hitting stuff. Um, we've got reducing the energy cost of the ability, uh, beneficial power stats, which those are going to matter. And then a base, well, this is a specifically a crit chance buff, but that type of effect can be stretched out to like many other stats that you can give yourself while you are doing something else. This type training was perfect. Nice. Uh, but yeah, and then of course, number go up is like the number one way to make something good. Cause if, if you set the number high enough, eventually, hopefully you'll get somewhere. The problem with a lot of the augments is that they're designed to be objective increases, which they aren't because they cost a mod slot. Right. Yeah. And the cost of a mod slot is interesting. I've seen a lot of people, especially like commenting even like early on the video that I posted where I'm going over the augments and the changes and like, you know, being sad about it. Um, a lot of people were like, the main change that needs to happen is that all augments need to be able to go into the Exilus slot. And like the answer to all augments need to go in the Exilus slot is no, they don't. And the reason that they don't is because the augments that we use have earned a real mod slot. And that's the important bit. Like if it can only go into the Exilus slot because it's a bad augment and you would use it if you could put it in the Exilus slot because it is a subpar augment like this one, for example, then why is it not just good enough to like even be better than like an intensify or other basic power stat mod like special effects and like Warframe specific mods? should be able to be better than Augur Reach. And I don't think that's a weird opinion to have. <clears throat> if you can't, if you're not better than that, there's a significant problem. You smoke shadow on my main ash build now. It's really nice. See, for me, all right, we're, we're, we're also going to talk about why I don't think these things are enough. So smoke shadow, smoke screen augment, conceals allies within 15 meters for eight seconds and grants 150% critical chance while invisible. So 150% critical chance while invisible I don't think does anything for Ash. Ash's damage is already extremely, extremely high, and you can do millions of damage with your shadows, and it is not a problem. He's actually one of the frames that scales very easily to like level 9,000 with very little problems. So I think that it's really weird to just add critical chance and call it a day whenever the thing that would be much, much, much more beneficial on this ability is adding either base 
or just a ton of duration to this ability because the main thing that smoke shadow needs is way more duration so yeah exactly what uh blind is saying in chat uh smoke shadow change plus 100 duration to ashes too would way make this way way more appealing because it is the power in his kit that demands that duration from you and it would make it so you can use this instead of running like narrow-minded or or whatever else or whatever or like high cost mod and then this effect is like okay i can make my allies invisible and it's a real part of my build that can get in there also I don't think 100% is a ludicrous amount because like, I mean, even if you make it like 60%, it probably is pretty worth it. Like it's worth running at that point. Um, but his two duration by default is terrible. But why would people use Loki then? People don't use Loki already, so that's not relevant. Why are you using Loki whenever Octavia exists? She already has like 40 seconds of invisibility as like a joke, like as a ha ha funny funny. And she never has to refresh her ability and everything else. Like Loki already needs a complete rework. So the fact that he's invisible for longer doesn't really matter because Ash is way better than Loki is right now. Also, Wisp can literally jump and be invisible. But yeah, in terms of like this being a good augment for Ash, the thing that his two needs more than anything is more duration. And if it's not going to be uh base duration on his ability putting it on the augment to get like the benefit of this augment plus a lot of duration for that specific ability i think would make this very usable it, honestly it would be a staple of his build if it did that but you could also balance it to a point where it would be you know more of an option like instead of 100 percent where it's you know a clear staple at that point you could say it's like 50 percent which is a bit less than like a prime continuity and it becomes like a, just a very good mod that you can include but you don't necessarily need to if you're comfortable with just like you know the base duration or 130 percent or if you think you can get by on just trickery which is honestly most of the way uh that ash is at high levels are doing it at this point and you know your two is just a filler because that two duration is so short so yeah on, on this one like the critical chance i don't think adds anything to ash like his playstyle the damage is already hilariously high so having a utility effect and like a power increase for this specific ability would be much much better uh so moving on though we have titanic rumbler so titanic rumbler create a single rumbler with 300 health and 400 damage reactivating will cause him to slam the floor and knock down enemies in 15 meters okay so the numbers went up on this mainly the 400 damage here's the thing this does such poor damage that like how do i put this you could make this stupid and just say oh we'll make it forty thousand percent and the ability still would not be good because that does not really move the needle actually like it'll make it so he punches stuff sometimes but it wouldn't be worth slotting this into your atlas build uh and actually using the ability because it's still a big slow rumbler that does things super slowly so legitimately adding two zeros to the damage slot here does nothing for you uh and because of that I think that the the main thing here is that there's not a way to save this augment like the way to save this augment would be to give you like a flat 100 strength like just to all your abilities like just turn it into a better blind rage and completely ignore the regular effect of this augment which at that point you know that means that this augment shouldn't exist and that uh this ability needs to be better there's not an augment that's going to save rumblers because they suck like plain and simple they suck and are not good like a different effect for this that would be more meaningful for atlas would legitimately be remove all of this text and the only text on it is rumblers cost five energy because if rumblers cost five energy that means you could spam it to create rubble to build up rubble so you could use the other augment to do more damage with your one and get to cast your one for free like that that's where we are is just killing your rumblers over and over for rubble would be better than any text that is on this no matter how high the numbers are like maybe there's a world where you make it four million percent extra damage 
but I think it says a lot that I don't think I would actually even use that outside of maybe a niche scenario where D did something that doesn't make any sense. Get 100% ability strength for each rumbler alive. Yeah, but stuff like that just is not, it's not reasonable. So yeah, this, this augment, I just think there's legitimately no saving it. And the ability is too, is it's too bad to save for anything that would be, you know, reasonable in any kind of, you know, situation that they would ever actually do. Rubble no longer decays while rumblers are active. See, when we're talking about that stuff, that's a completely different augment. Like that, that's an entirely different thing. Like we're not changing the flavor of this or just like adding a small stat to give you like a better reason to install it and then have the other benefit. Because if this said like say plus 30% duration, I'm literally not using it over constitution, which gives 28% duration and another minor effect because it's just not worth it. The main effect on this just isn't good enough, plain and simple, because rumblers just aren't good enough. Rumble is really the kind of direction they should take is four, just not with the random downsides for no reason. Yeah, no, I fully agree with that. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about Endless Lullaby. Okay, so of note, this augment is bugged. So we're going to talk about that really quickly. Uh, this says straight up, Lull Augment, performing a finisher on or killing a sleeping enemy will re-trigger Lull for 100% of the remaining duration. Passive, plus 50% Lull duration. So, this says on it, remaining duration. But whenever it reprocs, it reprocs for the full duration of Lullaby. So it, it literally doesn't do what it says right now. Like what it says on the tin is not what it does. So right now, when you remove the word remaining, it's not bad. So all DE has to do is not fix it. So what you're saying right now is it does the thing I want. That's correct. Correct. Right now it is bugged to do the thing that you would actually like actually use this for. So it works the way it should, not the way it says. Correct, exactly correct. Wait, didn't this have three seconds between the kills? Uh, that's not written on the mod, but I do believe that that is still in effect. But yeah, for whatever reason, like the three second buffer between activations is not written on the card. I do believe that is still in effect though. Very strange. Lots of weird stuff going on with this card. Hopefully, they just remove the word remaining and then don't change anything else about this. And then I'm actually pretty good on this. I think that plus 50% lull duration, plus it reprocking and you never having to cast lullaby ever again. That's actually like, you know, that's of good benefit for Baruch. There are reasons to include that on here because most of what you're including duration for would be for lull. So you can really remove a lot from your build and also you can run like even worse efficiency um, because you're, you only need to cast it one time. So it's not a big deal. So yeah, that's, I think that this is, yeah, very, very good in its bugged form. Hopefully it stays that way. Uh, but as it stands right now, it doesn't do what it says. And if it did what it said, it is pretty bad. It's really bad because remaining duration is not even close to as good to refreshing for full duration. Also, yeah, lull is line of sight, so it's not like it's insanely broken. It's just nice for Baruch uh, to have like an augment like this if it if it was supposed to work in the way that it is currently bugged. In the, in the way that it is currently bugged, I think it would actually be like, yeah, this is an augment that you can choose to use or choose not to use, and it is a build option. Do you get restraint with lullaby refreshes? Yes, you do. That is, that is entirely in effect. But yeah, so interestingly, this one is bugged to be good right now. Hopefully it remains bugged and bug becomes featured. So that was, that, that's a weird thing to get into. Um, but yeah, it does, it does not do what it says on the tin. Speaking of things that don't do what they say on the tin, it has come to my attention that this augment also does not do the thing that it says. So radial javelin augment. Each enemy hit will increase Excalibur's melee damage by 15% for 16 seconds. So, did you guys know that melee damage, the exact 
wording that is used on pressure point and all other instances of it except for spoiled strike which is also inconsistent all stack additively did you know that this one is multiplicative with other numbers it is multiplicative it does not do what it says or rather I suppose it's just extremely unclear what the fuck it does so I don't know if it's supposed to work that way or not I literally don't if it is supposed to work that way then this is fine it's it's fine you could choose to use it if it is not supposed to work that way and it's supposed to do what you would presume from what it says it is absolutely horrid wasn't this also a bug before this buff apparently I I just didn't know that because I figured it did what it said um but you know there's that uh but yeah if this also is in its I don't know if it's bugged or not it's impossible to know if it's bugged or not because it, it doesn't do the thing that it says it does that's intuitive based on the way things are worded in Warframe ideally this would just be reworded and then with the increased damage number uh this is actually pretty good it's worked like this since sacrifice right well before the number was too low to even consider but now the number is high enough that in its in working that way it would be good enough but yeah I think at the very least DE needs to reword this if it's supposed to work that way because it that it does not do that like reword it to, it has to be something else besides melee damage because that's a specific stat line that is in the game melee damage is a specific stat line that exists in the game so it needs to be like damage dealt by your melee weapons or something and I am serious about that because you have to have some fucking way to differentiate it in in words does the multiplicative benefit exalt a blade significantly well so if you're hitting let's say 10 guys with this it's 150 percent multiplicative damage with all of your other multipliers which is really good like that's not bad that's a very significant amount of damage like that's not bad at all actually so yeah this is another one where it's like fuck any day now it could just be additive with pressure point and you know who knows uh but yeah so th this one if it is supposed to work like the way that it currently works then it's actually like a build option it's like a good choice doesn't this scale with strength it does scale with strength that's actually the reason it's a good choice because you can have like 200 strength and then you're getting 30 percent per stack and then you're getting 300 percent melee damage multiplicative with other multipliers and that's actually the reason why it would be good if it wasn't affected by strength it'd actually be complete dog shit and really wouldn't be like worth the energy investment of doing that as compared to doing a number of other things um but because it's affected by strength it makes it a lot better and the base duration is good so yeah if this is supposed to work that way uh then good stuff if it's and also if it's supposed to work the way that it does it should be reworded basically it's a free bane on crack yeah pretty much pretty much that's pretty much exactly what it is so if I would use this try to replace pressure point slash primed with another elemental mod on exalted blade no because it's multiplicative with see this is exactly why it's confusing because this is melee damage which is the same thing that pressure point says but this is multiplicative with pressure point it's not additive that's why it's good if it was additive with pressure point it would not be good it would be shit and the way that it reads is that it should be an additive it's total damage dealt by melee weapons it's its own separate multiplier even though it's not worded that way yeah so that, that that's how this works currently even though it doesn't read that way is your total final melee damage times 1.15 yeah if you only have one stack because remember that this says each enemy hit so you hit the javelins say you hit 10 enemies because that's probably at least what you're going to get on average that would be 150 percent final multiplier so you multiply whatever damage you get at the end by like 2.5 if you have 10 enemies hit on no extra power strength yeah it is javelin like does does it still need to be better yeah because this would be the good thing not anything the base ability does and that's a problem but at least if this is supposed to work the way that it does uh it's not bad and Pablo said it's working as intended a couple years ago right so if that is the case please reword it in game to mean that
But yeah, okay, so moving on from Fury's Javelin, Surging Dash. So we actually talked about this one uh, before it came out as one that should get buffed. Uh, and let me tell you, them changing this to an 8 from 4, completely useless. And I'm not here to try and fix Slash Dash because what this augment does, does not do anything to fix Slash Dash. However, the thing that we talked about before we even saw what the actual changes were, was changing this number to 100. And if you change this number to 100, it actually becomes really, really good. Because if this number is 100, uh, Exalted Blade does get a damage multiplier from your higher combo counts, which you'd only need to hit two enemies if you have like any amount of power strength in order to max out your combo. So it would mean occasionally using Surging Dash and using a slot on your Exalted Blade for um, some combo duration would mean that you have a really significant multiplier. And also you could meme with it for heavy attack builds if it was 100. Is it gonna make, sur is it gonna make you know, Slash Dash a good ability on its own? No, not in any way, shape or form, but it would be hilarious and maybe sometimes worth it for Xcal to use. Doesn't only work for direct hits and not the waves though. Right, but that's still a huge amount of damage. And then also Excalibur's waves don't do enough damage in say like um, Steel Path to like nuke certain enemies. So you'd be able to nuke enemies super, super hard at close range. Surging Dash is for building combo and Exalted Blade, but Slash Dash sucks. Yeah, Slash Dash should still be reworked as an ability to do something uh, more than it does right now. But yeah, so this, this is purely, I think, just number go up. I don't think there's anything you need to add to this. There's no additional effects that you need. You don't need to make it cost less because it's already not an expensive ability. Um, just this number as 100. And I think it would at least be like fun as a goof and maybe situationally good. And then I believe this number is even currently affected by power strength. So if you built enough power strength, you'd only have to hit one enemy to get full combo which could lead you to some like really goofy heavy attack builds and you know maybe maybe that would be a real thing in some you know niche scenarios it could happen uh but yeah that that that's this one I think it's just yeah like in it as an idea this is a good augment it does a very unique thing that could enable some builds if the number was high enough it legitimately because I'm pretty sure it's affected by power strength even if you made this 50 It'd probably be workable, provided you're going to have at least 200% strength, which, you know, usually Excalibur would like to have 200% strength. So maybe even just going to 50 would be enough. 100 in it would definitely see at least some, like, joke play. Moving on. Mending Splinters. So this one, uh, this is the one people keep telling me that this is good, but uh, no, it's not. So this is a four Gara. Splinter Storm Augment for each target affected. Splinter Storm heals 15 health a second. So this one is weird because augments are a certain level of accessible. And with that, this augment is behind enough barriers that you should instead get elevate or repair if you need to heal. And if you're healing an objective, 15 health a second is not enough. So, I think the actual best thing for this augment is that this is a very minor effect, and I think if this was also 30% duration for Splinter Storm, that it would actually be really good. Like, it would be a nice little addition to Gara's kit, and you'd have good reasons to equip it. I think 30% duration means that this is a solid include, and that, yeah, like, you, you, could, you could absolutely go for that. Like you get a little bit of objective healing. You can heal yourself without having to go into operator. I think just a 30% duration, maybe even like just 25, make it like a lot closer to like, you know, the auger message. You could absolutely go for that. And I think that it would be a fully reasonable mod that you'd put in just for like the slight benefit and, um, you know, being able to sometimes heal an objective here or there. So yeah, I think, I think this one's like really close to being like, you know, good enough minor effect plus good stat line that the ability already wants 
good stuff. Like that's all it needs. 15 health per second just won't be useful for objectives. It would have to be a percentile. Yeah, that's the other option is that you make this like super highly situational and make it a percentile heal because if you were to change it to before it was three if you were to change it to three percent health per target affected um then like assuming assuming you could still use you and the defense target if it's stacked up to six percent for both of you and you were healing the target six percent every second then that could be good enough like you could definitely go for that if this restored shields it would be the absolute stones like it would absolutely be rock solid it'd be unbeatable it'd be insane that's why it doesn't restore shields but yeah I, I think to make this like very easily usable you just add like 25 30 percent duration to it just for splinter storm and you're you're in there like I think that's great I think there would be no problem with this augment uh it would be a nice little heal to add on it would probably then be an extremely good like gift you could give to a newer player that wants to use Gara because it's like hey you don't have healing yet and you went for Gara instead of going for Rhino which is a thing that can happen um and I think that would be a lot better that way as it is the effect is too small to earn a mod slot anywhere can't percent heal objectives anymore there's no reason that you wouldn't allow you couldn't allow this to do that New players can't maintain Splinter Storm because they have no energy. I mean, new players get access to corrupted mods really early. Like, if you're looking at, like, bleeding expertise, and then this gives 30% duration, and then you have regular continuity, so you're at, like, 110%, uh, or actually you're at just, like, strictly 100% uh, duration off that, like, doable. So much mobile defense it would make a gara even more desirable for that not going to displace wukong of course but it'd be nice to have for newer players yeah i i don't think it would it's not going to like power creep gara or anything like that never mind it is thing yeah never mind it is also a mod that exists i'm just assuming like you're going to get the most important mod which is fleeting uh but yeah obviously never mind it is also not that hard for a new player to acquire either and you would normally use it on gara uh but yeah this one not too far off but like the base effect by itself not even close to enough not even in the relative ballpark of enough okay moving on Dreadward. this is also one that people seem to think is good enough now here's the thing the problem with this augment is functionality so becoming unkillable for eight seconds when dread mirror kills a target by ripping its life force is too restrictive and building your play style around constantly doing this in order to refresh this timer where you have at least 200 percent duration is not worth it the opportunity cost that you incur in order to do that shit is the worst ever because you need to not do enough damage to fully kill enemies you need to get them under 40 percent and then you need to kill them with dread ward or you need to throw a slow projectile at an enemy and then jump with dread ward and then the projectile has to hit them while you're doing the animation and then they die from that and then that counts to activating dread ward and all of that sucks ass all of that sucks the opportunity cost is not worth it in any way shape or form however this one is really easy to fix you remove the last five words on this mod that's it that's all you have to do become unkillable for eight seconds when dread mirror kills a target and probably change target to enemy it's easy you just have to kill them with the ball which is not that hard because you can use your four plus the ball to kill enemies that's the intended play pattern of Garuda and that would give you a huge boon to your survivability as Garuda which is exactly what she needs maybe it can't refresh for balance sure I mean I don't think there's any reason it shouldn't refresh like there's plenty of warframes that literally just can't die I think if you're keeping up the constant play style of Garuda of like having your four constantly applied to all enemies and throwing your one and killing them that way that you should be rewarded for that with real survivability because her one don't do that by default 
Wasn't this mod irrelevant with the invulnerability changes to Garuda? No, actually no, because she still has a lot of points of vulnerability. We were testing this yesterday and she still has a lot of points where she like can very easily get caught out and die um, because you're not always casting your four. Your four doesn't kill things by itself. You do have to shoot gun or throw the orb out of Dread Ward and do all that stuff in order to like, you know, kill the enemies actually. Could you maybe in a squad justify spamming your four all the time and being invincible a lot? Sure, but you're also not really adding anything to the squad at that point. But yeah, I think this one is really easy to fix. You just remove the last five words and probably change target to enemy. But yeah, as it stands right now, it is too restrictive. And that functionality that this works off of on Dreadward is not worth building around. The other way that you could fix this augment is by making it so that Dreadward's kill percentage is affected by power strength. Because then if you build 250% strength, you could instant kill enemies that you can hit with Dreadward. That would also make this good enough. I think that doing it the other way is more interesting because it just encourages you to use the actual full kit of Garuda by like throwing the orb and doing all that stuff. Uh, and I think that that is way more interesting than just building for hella strength and just like constantly doing the very slow animation all the time. Um, but yeah, but also as it stands right now, a thing that's really important to note, uh, you need more incentive to throw the orb while they're affected by your four and stuff, because right now there's no reason for you to ever fucking throw that orb in in any situation because instead you should shoot the Nataruk down a hallway because it's infinitely better to do that but yeah th this one I like a lot of the words on this just not those last five it's very close moving on warding thurible this is another one where some words need to be removed so thurible augment allies in range take 50% less damage while channeling Thurible and grant one additional energy charge whenever damaged. Remove while channeling. Full stop. Fuck while channeling. While channeling? Those words are stupid and it sucks. Get rid of them. Get that shit out of my face. Boom. Really good augment. Really solid augment. Being able to build for like, I think, it, what, what would you need? Like 180% power strength in order to have like a really solid DR on yourself and allies that are in range of you. Great. Cool build around for Harrow. Makes Harrow more defensible. Harrow's already pretty easy to survive with because he's got his one, of course. Uh, but this is just a different thing that you could do. And also, whenever you get hit while your uh, Thurible is on, you get more energy back whenever you kill those enemies. And that's great. Does that DR stack with adaptation? Yes, it would. Giving a hero a reason to exist in a group? Insanity. I know it's crazy. We should, we can't do it. But yeah, this while channeling Thurible is like the smallest, most insignificant amount of time imaginable. And there's no reason to ever equip this mod while it says while channeling. Because the total amount of time that you're usually channeling Thurible for is maybe five seconds. And that's overkill because once you're at 10 energy, you're done. Like anything you go above 10 energy per kill, you're like, you're just looking at high numbers just to goof troop a high number. And that's fine, but it's not a reason to keep spinning this shit for the damage reduction. But yeah, all, all this needs is these two words to be gone. These two words suck. They make this completely useless. There's no reason for them to exist. He's supposed to be a selfish support. Well, he fucking is right now. All right, moving on. Tribunal. So this is one that um, I know Pablo has some just like straight up, like he, he does not want it to work the way that would make it good. So condemn augment. Other players will trigger 100% of the effects of penance and thurible when attacking chained enemies. So Pablo does not want this to say minus the last four words. And Pablo is the designer for Hero. So because I know that, obviously, there's not really much to be done here. So, so, in order to give you a reason to equip this, I think that this should probably say plus 30%, maybe plus 40% range. Although if, if it's range for everything, plus 30% is probably good. If it's range just for condemn, 
then you probably want it to be 40. Like, be because I know that Pablo doesn't like removing the last four words on this and making it so that Harrow would suddenly be like a somewhat okay support um, because it would make him more passive and because he's supposed to be very active, which I get, I'm not going to suggest that. I would normally suggest that, but I'm not going to suggest that. Also, that won't suddenly make Harrow good uh, because we just don't need that kind of energy generation in Warframe anymore. Um, but that, that is a way to make this good. But I also think just adding a good chunk of range to just Harrow at large or uh, an even larger chunk of range uh, to specifically condemn is reasonable. Oh, thank you, Scarlet. One good thing about it is discover shields you give instantly when cast. Right. I mean, that's what condemn does already. I certainly thrown condemn across the room and focused everywhere else while someone else handles that area. So encouraging that with plus range would be great. Yeah. I think that plus range, there's a reason for me to include this with builds. Uh, teammates might see some benefits from it sometimes. So I think I think that's the way to get this to be included in a build is by making it a mod that you include over Augur Reach. Like make it 3% better than Augur Reach and your teammates will see some effects from it sometimes. Like it's not like going to be consistent, but sometimes it'll happen. With that, we're moving on to Guided Effigy. So Guided Effigy says, a cast and hold to make Effigy move to your aim point deals 4,000 damage a second and restores five energy for each enemy in its path. Roars on arrival, stunning nearby enemies. So here's the thing with this. Effigy, as it stands, is completely useless. Like the ability itself is devoid of all purpose and the amount of energy that it costs is outrageous. The only thing that Effigy is ever used for, ever, is making it so you get double credits from Profit Taker. Effigy as an ability would be better if you hit four to give yourself 30 seconds of double credits. That would be infinitely better than anything Effigy does at current. Effigy at large needs a complete rework. And because of that, it is entirely irrelevant to talk about anything on this mod. Because without a full rework of Effigy, there's it stands no chance. It stands no chance whatsoever. Like there's there's no text on this that I could reasonably make this say where it would be good. So yeah, th this is just a matter of uh, Chroma's design does not support the ability to have this augmented because the ability is not good enough. So yeah, that that's that's where I am on guided effigy. Uh, corroding barrage. So I may have, I perhaps have a weird take on corroding barrage. So each projectile has a 100% chance of inflicting a corrosive status effect. Tempest barrage gains 100% ability strength. Okay. Hear me out. Change the last Tempest barrage to Hydroid. And then, and then if you do that, this is a better blind rage. You're in me out, hear me out. And then you can subsume gloom onto Hydroid. Okay. And then you can max gloom with Hydroid and that'll be his only good ability in his whole kit. You guys following me here? That's pretty good, huh? Yeah, meanwhile, that is Protea's fucking passive. <clears throat> yeah, as it stands, um, Hydroid is not good enough. He does not have, like, the base kit design level necessary in order to make this anything. Um, I think that by default, because Corrosive was nerfed as a damage type, this should be a strict armor strip, like, just raw. Like, it should probably be, like, 20% uh, armor strip every time each projectile hits. And then the Tempest Barrage gains 100% ability strength. Um, like, you would have to make it the damage from your one scale significantly with enemy level. 
So that way you could chunk through their armor and then Tempest Barrage could actually kill them. If you did all of those things, uh, which would include changing the base ability and changing this augment, then sure, that would actually, you know, give Hydroid a play style. Uh, but without doing that, there's not really any saving this ability. Do I think that those changes are particularly are particularly difficult for DE to do? No, actually. I think that those are some very simple changes that DE could do very easily. Uh, but I really doubt that they are going to happen. You realize DE will do none of the, these suggestions, right? Oh, sure. Whatever. I mean, I'm used to that. That's, that's very normal. Uh, moving on. Curative Undertow. Uh, so somebody did tell me a use for this, and we're going to talk about that. But Undertow Augment, allies can stand in the pool to regain 30% health every one and a half seconds. Hydroid will restore 10% health. So all that this did was remove the extra energy drain from healing allies. So somebody gave me the use for this, though. This is for Hydroid players that want to be stepped on by Saren. And I did, I could, I can't believe I fucking missed it. I fucking missed it. I missed the meta call. Like I didn't, I did not realize what the real use of this augment was. And honestly, that's my bad. And I'm sorry. Like it's, you have, you have to give the Saren a reason to step on you. And this is the only reason that exists for Hydrate. It's the only thing in his kit that can make you do that. So that's, that's, that's on me. I'm sorry for that one. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically undertow, the, the healing does not matter at all. Hydroid's not a health tank. So giving him a heal does nothing for you. Uh, Hydroid exists in two states, uh, three states. We'll say three states has shields and is alive, does not have shields and is about to die dead. Those are the three states that Hydroid can be in at any given time. He can have shields and be able to survive a hit. He cannot have shields and be in immense danger, or he can be dead. That's it. That's the only things that Hydroid can do right now. He does not have uh, any other states, really. Oh, the, yeah, the fourth state is in a puddle. True, sure. Uh, but yeah, the, the true facts of the situation are if you were to make Tempest Barrage good enough at dealing damage to enemies that are in Undertow, and if Undertow could actually do the thing that it's supposed to do, which is pick up enemies and then keep enemies in it, and then either Undertow or Tempest Barrage were good enough to kill the enemies that are in Undertow, and your two cost a little small enough amount of energy that you could use it to get around and do the thing that's supposed to do which it doesn't do which is zoop up more enemies as you glide through hallways invincible if you could do all those things that are clearly there for hydroid's kit and what he's probably supposed to do if those numbers were good enough and the functionality was there and it wasn't bugged to shit, you still wouldn't include this because it doesn't it doesn't have any relevance to that play style whatsoever so yeah basically this one uh adding healing to undertow without fully changing like the statistical makeup of what makes hydroid hydroid this is like completely devoid of value uh but yeah if this said enemies also take 30 percent health damage it'd be great sure yeah i mean yeah you could completely invert what the ability does sure but yeah curative undertow um uh, no no real saving it uh hydroid would need a real play style in order to even like change the evaluation on that speaking of that uh title impunity uh, clear status effects and grants 12 seconds of status immunity for yourself and allies that come in contact with it. Reduces Tidal Surge's energy cost to 15. Okay, here's the thing. This is the exact same problem as Curative Undertow. Are we under the impression that you will get the ability to clear a status effect with this? Like, are we, are you sure? Is that a thing that you think is going to happen? He won't live through getting a status effect for more than like a second. Like if you get a heat proc in any kind of real content, you will exp you will fucking evaporate. You will goodbye. You you'll become a puddle of blood. So like the main effect of this is nothing. Now we did get a leak on this, which was that reduces tidal surges energy cost to zero. And if you were to reduce it to zero, everything above the word reduces does not fucking matter. And reducing it to zero cost would be the main sell. 
And then in that situation, if Undertow and Tempest Barrage were good enough, you would use those and then you'd use the zero cost title impunity to get around the map and zoop up enemies. And that would be really good. But the first part of this augment is unsavable. Like it's just completely fucking irrelevant because you can't get status procced while you're a puddle anyway. Undertow still doesn't hold enemies in it when you use Tidal Surge. Yeah, no, it still doesn't have the functionality that it's supposed to. Zero just means it becomes an AFK affinity farm. Make it give you no affinity. Like, just tack that onto the bottom of this. They tacked on a restriction to the Baruch one. There's no reason they can't do it to this one. Like, if the problem is that it becomes an AFK affinity farm, make it worth no affinity. Seems like an easy solution to me. If we're that down bad for affinity, we've got bigger issues. That's true too. Uh, but yeah, this is basically a victim of Hydroid has no defined play style that actually works. Uh, so whoops. Moving on. Desiccation's Curse. So killing a blinded enemy with a finisher has a 100% chance of summoning a sand shadow. All, all sand shadows deal double damage. So I was informed that apparently, <laughs> I didn't know this, you can only have one sand shadow from this ability at a time. Which is baffling. Like all sand shadows, plural, multiple. Like you can get one from your two. And one from this augment on your one, which would give you a uh, dose. <laughs> but fucking why? Can his fourth also make one? I wouldn't know. Regardless, the way to fix this augment and not even to fix it, it wouldn't be a good play style. But let's OK, let, let's say let, let's say we're going to make this a good play style for Anaros to give him some reason to use abilities, right? OK, killing a blinded enemy remove the next three words has a 100% chance of summoning a sand shadow no limit on sand shadows from this ability or okay let's say the limit is 20 the limit is 20 sand shadows something you know reasonable all sand shadows deal 25x damage try 25 out that's probably not enough to even really be a meme but at least it'd be something Uh, Dan, we so we we've talked. Adi's talked about before uh, abilities that summon minions are not supposed to affect the spawn rate of enemies, uh, so it should not. Oh yeah, one x per shadow alive. Sure, up to twenty affected by power strength, maybe. No, two x per shadow alive affected by power strength. Because then let's say you have two hundred percent power strength. That's a four x. You have 20 that's 80 times damage that might be a funny meme that actually might be hilarious and that's all you can hope for like even with all those things that we just said like that's that would be a silly goofy mood build if it worked that way this is hellman so technically you need to be aware of other warframe balance but thermal thunder augment exists yeah no that's fully balanced on any warframe you put it on 100 percent that's just higher ceiling Wukang at some point. Is it? Because here's the thing. You're summoning copies of the enemies, and they are as dumb as the sand they're made out of. Like, they almost always don't even shoot at, like, other enemies around them. Like, the thing that's good about Wuklone is that it uses your guns, and it uses them pretty well. But yeah, so like if this was like summoning enemies back, like if you summoned all copies of Anaros, we're fucking in there. Like if, if you want to change the wording on this to sand shadows or shadows of Anaros, which also, by the way, due to the lore of Anaros would actually make way more sense because the nanites that Anaros shoots out are replicating so they can replicate him instead of the fucking enemies. Because why would you replicate the enemies when you can replicate Anaros? If you could summon like up to three like sand shadows of Anaros that use your guns. We're way in. That's a fucking build. 
Like that sounds like a raw play style that's sick. Are they gonna do that? No chance. 0% chance of that happening. That'd be way too cool. And it's also a very significant mechanical change, which, you know, prob probably outside the realm of possibility for them to put in. Uh, so moving on, we have uh, Elemental Sandstorm. So here's the thing with this. Uh, we tested this one and uh, this gains 50% ability range and has a 100% chance of inflicting status effects based on the damage types and mods on the equipped melee weapon. Based on how we tested this, uh, the damage of this ability would need to be multiplied by like 20 in order to kind of do really anything. But yeah, because the, the problem is that Sandstorm sucks. So the, the, ba like the effects that this says all sound great. Like these are all good, like scales off your melee weapon, 100% status chance, 50% more range. All of those words are great, but it's multiplying off a of base damage that cannot matter. It has no propensity to matter whatsoever. The thing that you could add to this that could make it matter is also adding the base damage of the melee weapon you have equipped. So then you're talking about, you know, equipping a Fragor and adding that much base damage to your ability, which is then modified by power strength and all of the mods that are on that Fragor. And then you're basically, you know, spinning a giant Fragor with over 100% status chance in a tornado. And that would work out really well. You could do that. I find it pretty unlikely that that would happen. So yeah, you'd have to add more to this to make it scale Elemental Sandstorm even more than this which is pretty unrealistic. Moving on, we have Rift Haven. Banish Augment. Allies banished to the Rift will have 25% of their maximum health restored every second. So this is instead, restored every second is the new stuff here because before it would just restore 25% of their maximum health. So the thing on this is that this is actually okay in some scenarios, mainly it's for defection. Like defection would be like the place where this would come into effect. I think the really good thing that you could put on here uh, is that allies banished to the rift will have 25% of their maximum health restored every second and be immune to status effects. I think that's where you make this worth it. I think it becomes worth it when you add that on top of it. Because then you're you're then you're invulnerable to knockdowns in the rift, which can sometimes occur. Like there's you're immune to a lot of things. It also means going into the rift would also like you know clear your statuses so you could like dash in and not die to the electric proc you have on you or whatever it maybe becomes like worth just generally running outside of like niche scenarios where you're healing ai in pubs you get flamed to hell for banishing people i mean yeah sure that, that that's gonna happen regardless though that's just what limbo does that's part of his kit is you get flamed like you're stopping time or you're killing things with the exalted weapons sure does it only apply to Limbo's one? This applies to uh, any ally that you have rifted. So it, is, it also works from your four. Limbo becomes a banished bot and that's okay. Yeah. Limbo's passive. Everyone hates you. Yeah. That's just it. Yeah. He's a Johnny Warframe. That's just, that's just the normal thing that's going on with Limbo. But yeah, so that's, that's, that's what's up with like these different augments that they changed. That is, I believe all of them. Yeah. That's the last one uh, of what they changed so far. I think that a lot of these are savable on the Warframes that are savable. Because <laughs> obviously, the three on Hydroid without Hydroid being good is uh, pretty rough. But yeah, the, the, the Rift Haven one, though, like, you just have to come to terms with what Limbo is. And, like, if you add some status, status immunity, it's not going to move the needle very much, but at least it feels like you get something more. What I'm seeing, bros, is that a lot of the problems uh, with the Warframe powers that suck are that there are people that keep believing Warframe is a corridor shooter. I mean, I suppose so. Have you said anything about when the other half of the Augment River will come out? Uh, I don't think they've said specifically. I would think we could assume that some of it will come with Angels of the Zaramon. Just joining, what do we say about Alice's, if anything? Oh, basically, the TLDR for Alice's is that the Rumblers are unsavable and totally useless, and they need to change as a base ability before there's any consideration for an augment to make it better. Like, the, th the thing that we came to the conclusion of is if you look at Rumblers as a power, you delete all of the text off of Titanic Rumbler, 
you delete every piece of text that's here remove the whole thing and just say rumblers cost five energy and that's better because that means you can spam cast rumblers and build up rubble and at the point where the best thing your four is doing is giving you a little rubble for cheap and that's better than anything that this ability does now yikes Like, that's stripping this down to its basis possible effect. Rumble Augment would be cute if we got Rumblers follow your punch meme. See, that's the thing that's, like, I think too mechanically deep for them to want to spend the dev time to do. Right. So I have a quick question. How much farther do I have left in Elden Ring once I get to the, uh, the Altus area? You probably have, like, 40 hours plus left, depending on what you do. So you're saying their patch has not changed the abilities augment use i mean i think i mean people are going to experiment with some of these and like there seem to be some people enjoying the ash one although i think it doesn't move the needle at all um in terms of like using ash like a couple of them will see some more use but i think people will come to the conclusion that like they kind of didn't change anything what if atlas is two had an augment that made the boulder petrify enemies and kill them if it made it kill them then well, actually that's just way too slow still actually never mind I'm 100 hours in Elden Ring and just got to the area after Altus I explored a bit much nice we just got here how's Garuda uh we did Garuda testing yesterday there will be a video on Garuda we were going over the augments for today and in terms of dread word basically dread word needs words removed from it people find gimmicky uses for things that doesn't mean they'll be worth using yeah like the, the goal in my opinion is not everything needs to be the best thing but it should do something and I think I think the the biggest uh thing for that is surging dash because this number the thing that we said is to change this to 100 when you change this number to 100 it creates a meme build like it might be like pretty decent it might be okay it's going to increase Excalibur's power probably a little bit but more so than anything else you're going to get a meme build where you slash dash into using a heavy attack with a better melee weapon that proc slash like doing a goofy thing like that is I think what the real thing this augment should do is because that's fun and it works like I don't think you need to make this augment say oh but it fully inherits the power of Excalibur's four and it increases the range of slash dash massively and makes it super wide so that it hits full rooms of enemies at a time and you can spam it and it does combos where it hits every enemy in the room multiple times like those are changes that probably should like you know be regular slash dash changes and if you changed slash dash to be good there's some possibility that if slash dash normally hit like 20 enemies then maybe the meme build becomes real again uh even with this much lower number but in the current state of slash dash this number would need to be 100 to be relevant the entire play style the augment right exactly with that change plus the other augment would be fun for a meme build right exactly like I, I think that augments should at least create a silly goofy thing to do and it doesn't have to be the best thing that that warframe does but it's whenever augments are not worth slotting and don't do anything fun that I have a significant problem I want the old non-targeted slash dash slash dash back fair but yeah that's what's going on with the augments and stuff but yeah this was just a, a fun little short thing to do that i thought you guys would enjoy so thank you all for joining me uh and michael thank you very much for the bits once again that is hugely appreciated this will be going up on youtube so you guys will be immortalized in the chat so spam your snakes because they're adorable uh just realized how they could fix hallowed reckoning add three words per affected enemy oh yeah there, there's tons of other augments that we could go over uh those of you on youtube if you want to see us go over the literal rest of the augments in the game I'm down for that super long video but you gotta let me know and obviously the only people on YouTube that can tell me that are people that watch the whole fucking video because this is the end of it uh so uh thank you all for hanging out look at all these good snakes in chat uh but yeah that is uh gonna do it for both this stream and the YouTube video so I will see you guys uh tomorrow I'm gonna head to sleep goodbye